Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Journeyman Project 3 Legacy of Time. Last time we finished up El Dorado, which means that Shangri-La is our final time zone in order to find a legacy piece in. According to the temple that we were in for El Dorado, the power over matter is here. Atlantis had the relic over life. El Dorado had the totem of time. So within the temple here, the power over matter. Not sure what that's actually going to mean, but we'll see what happens when we get to it. Hi, Yax. I don't really have much use for you anymore other than you're really, really fluffy. So first things first, now that we're back in Shangri-La, we have to find our way over the bridge. Because we visited the gardener. This post is blocking my way from seeing the garden, the greenhouse. We have to go back up to the Dob Dob and give him what he wants. We don't have it, though. But another thing we actually haven't done yet is well, talk to the pilgrim over here. We didn't really have a disguise when we first got him. But now we have two. So let's, uh, let's be the gardener. How about that? Hi, guy. Those must be some really warm mittens. Hello, friend. I can sense you are someone with a higher purpose. Like me, you have come to this monastery to seek something. You're a little too on the ball for my taste, but yeah. Higher power? I, well, I'm one of the brothers of Shangri-La, sure. Well, howdy there, pilgrim. Uh, okay, fine. Thanks for the input, Arthur. That's fine. Let's get to know more about him. Because he certainly came a long way to get here. What are you seeking? What most seek when they come here. Enlightenment. To join with the great Buddha and experience Nirvana. But before I can transcend, I must achieve something that I could never grasp. Humility. I must confront my pride. Are you a humble being? Hmm. It's an interesting question because I I don't know if I don't know about you, but I've never been asked that question a lot, so I don't think about it. I like that we're given the answer of not sure because, well, it's a good answer right here. To be honest, I never really thought about it. I'm not sure. Well then, traveler. Always ask of yourself the questions you cannot answer. And continue seeking. There are answers here. Everywhere. No, grasshopper. One cannot be humble without doubting one's own humility. Do not worry. Admitting your flaw will help you learn. Once you have found humility, you will take the final step to salvation. Oh yeah, I'm full of it! Pride abounds on the lips of man. You would do humanity a great service if you were to teach your humility to others. Certainly an interesting thing to keep in mind in terms of humility, I guess. Alright. Well, he certainly has come a long way, so he must know why he's here. and he can tell us more. Tell me about the monastery. This is the monastery of Shangri-La. The monks here have achieved complete inner serenity. I have traveled many hard months to reach this place. But the true journey begins here, before Shangri-La itself. Physically traveling here was simple, compared to the challenges posed by the true path. Oh, okay. 
The physical is over, now the mental and spiritual begin. Tell me about the true path. Most people walk about in a world of delusions, clouded by vices and deception. But there is a path of truth that cuts through the illusions, a path of deliverance. It is a path that begins with understanding the virtues of the spirit and embracing its truths. Go there, traveler, to the monastery, and walk the path to discover the secrets you seek. I will do so, and hopefully you will as well. Keep in mind about the true path, because this is not the last time that we're going to be hearing about it. It's actually a very important theme for the time zone. Goodbye. Always tread the path, and peace will find you. And he goes back down to... Pray. Alright. What does he say with the dob-dob? Hello again, friend. Strange. Ah, huh. okay. Never met him before with the dob dub, just for note. Hmm. Goodbye. Always tread the path, and peace will find you. Strange person. Well, everybody's a friend in Shangri-La, I suppose. But ultimately, our destination, based on the El Dorado Temple, is over there to that temple, based on the eyes that we saw just before we got the second piece of the legacy. Or, before we can go there, we have to get across the bridge. But if you remember from before, we needed a silk scarf in order to cross the bridge as the pilgrim. Where do you remember a silk scarf being now? I certainly do, but it's going to involve us jumping. Where? Well, actually back to Atlantis. So I'll see you back at the location where we can find where we're what we are seeking. If you remember back on the Egyptian captain's boat, there was another thing Arthur commented on. Mm. First was the gaff over here, but actually over on this part of the boat, he did mention that there was silk over here. And we can pick up the silk. Silk scarf. Nice and light. Exported by the Master Weavers of Asia. It's exactly what we need to give to the Dub Dub, so I'll see you back there. Alright, good to go, and we have our silk scarf. Hi, Dub Dub. What's up? Greetings, stranger. Do you wish to cross the bridge? I'm not a stranger anymore, am I? Well, I guess I am. Because I haven't actually started my journey. But I do. Yes. You must give the offering of the initiate before you can cross the bridge and enter Shangri-La. Well, here you are. Will this scarf allow me to enter? Welcome to our order, Initiate. Go back down the stairs. I will extend the bridge for you. For the protection of Shangri-La, I will have to retract the bridge once you cross. If you wish to travel over the bridge again, just ring the bell on the other side. Once you reach the monastery, seek Lama Dustin for instruction immediately. 
immediately. Well, let's learn more about the llama, because he certainly should have information about him. Is that a llama with two L's? Lama Dozden is a spiritual leader of our order. He's a teacher of Buddha's ways and the wisest man I know. Where can I find the Lama? You will find him inside the monastery. Once you cross the bridge, enter the prayer hall. Go there and he will train you. I just told you where he is, but I'll just reaffirm that. Goodbye. Very well. Go back down the stairs. I will extend the bridge for you. If you wish to return, ring the bell on the other side. All right, let's go. Let's see how this bridge is supposed to work. A lot better than when it was going down into the ravine. And now we can get actually a better look at this ravine from the bridge. And it even looks like it's really far away from where the pilgrim is. And he can't even see the bottom of this ravine. That's a bit startling. Now here, this is the bell that the Dob Dob was mentioning. We're going to be making use of it at some point, I'm sure. But it's going to make sure that this bridge is always open to us. Because if we move any further, the bridge retracts. Simply for safety reasons. And now we're up to the upper part of Shangri-La, the actual part. With some interesting places outside, I might, en might mention, including this part. There are a couple of areas in Shangri-La where you are able to go to places like this, but they don't really serve much of a purpose other than just another viewing point. You're able to go to this part of the monastery, but you're not able to go to over there. It's rather inconsistent for me. Now, the Dab Dab did mention that we are supposed to go into the monastery, but I'm not going to do that. We're here for the final legacy piece, and we know exactly where we're supposed to go now, thanks to the information in El Dorado. So we might as well just head there right now and see what we can do. Which means... Heading over to the temple. One last place that we're able to go to is this other side of the temple. Why? It still baffles me, because there is no reason to go over here, other than to just get another view of everything. Nothing that I'm able to actually gain in terms of information. It's a strange and mysterious place. It's a mystery! Much like the eyes up on top of the temple. Alright, temple. What's inside you? Well, some sort of open entryway. That gruesome-looking fellow above the door is Yama, the Hindu god of the dead. His presence at the doorway could be symbolic. I think he represents the borderline between life and death. Hmm. There are actually many mythological and religious figures that are common to both Hinduism and Buddhism. Siddhartha, the man who became Buddha, was originally a Hindu from India. He infused some of the elements of the Hindu religion when he created Buddhism. Mm-hmm. So here's Yama. Here's what Arthur was referencing. Hello. Yeah, he's a, he's a nice fellow, I suppose. What if we look over here? There's another Buddha. This one's white compared to the other two Buddhas that we've seen so far. What realm is this one for? The Shrine of the God's Realm. 
to awaken the vein with the music of the jewel. Hmm. All right, so we have so far the green one for the animal realm, the yellow one for the Praetis realm, as the gardener mentioned, and now we have the gods realm. All right, welcome to the temple. This place is fascinating in terms of just looking around, and the music accompanies this place so well. Not only is there tremendous detail in terms of the walls and everything else, just look at all of this detail, including the floors. As you can see on the floors, there's actually each individual symbol of the mantra we saw on the bottom part of Shangri-La near the Yaks. I really appreciate it. It looks really cool. Now, we're not able to look at the picture over there, but we're actually able to look at this one. Hmm. This looks interesting. If I'm not mistaken, and I rarely am, the mural depicts the Buddha entering six different segmented realms. Alright. Can we look at these realms closer? Looks like we can. In that segment, the Buddha is carrying a lute. A stringed musical instrument. Alright. There's probably different things that he's carrying. In that segment, the Buddha is carrying a fiery sword. In that segment, the Buddha is carrying a book. In that segment, the Buddha is carrying fire. In that segment, the Buddha is carrying a piece of fruit. In that segment, the Buddha is carrying a bowl. Hmm. There's nothing else we're able to look at, just the six main segments. But keep in mind the whole picture here. Let's head down and see what else is here. This place just has so much weight to it, I feel. I would love to go to a place like this and just be blown away by what is here. Gage, that depiction of the six segments we saw on the wall is duplicated on the floor of this temple. It must have great meaning to the monks of this monastery. It must. Alright, well we better tread lightly on it. The lightest footsteps you will ever hear in this place. Now you can walk the entire perimeter of this circle. But the reason why we're going all the way over here is because you may have noticed that this tower here has some openings. And this is where the first opening is. Hello. Well, it's carrying a loot, much like the same as, well, the picture that we just saw. That white statue is holding a loot, a musical instrument, while the other hand is outstretched as if it's waiting for something. Well, we certainly don't have anything for it at the moment, but we'll just keep in mind that we'll definitely need to come back here. This is the important place that we're going to. I wonder what is actually projecting that amount of light up there, because it's not the outside. Hmm. So, we have our bearings in terms of here, now we just have to find a way in order to give with the Buddha what he wants. There's not much else that we can do here at the moment, so we might as well head back to what we are actually supposed to be doing, which is heading to the monastery. We have a llama to meet. We completely passed over here. And everything's ornate and just... Did I mention how much I like the details in this game? That tent seems out of place. If my history serves me, that yellow banner atop the tent bears a Mongolian symbol. 
And if history serves me further, the great horde of Genghis Khan was terrorizing Asia about this time. Well, there goes the neighborhood. Mongol. Huh. Well, we got an individual over there. I'm not going to disturb him because he looks like he's working. Home. Concentrating, anyways. But there is another Buddha over here. Each of the Buddhas oh, are in a money. different position than the others. Its arm outstretched like it's holding something. Oh. And its feet are a bit weird. Just the toes. Yeah. Oh. But what realm would the Red Buddha be for? The Shrine of the Asuras Realm. To guard the oh. Titans from themselves. Hmm. Alright then. Oh. This is also an interesting directional piece of business. I just kind of pointed to, hey, I want to go back to the stairs, but Money there's no him. actual path for that from that point, so you're redirected. Don't know why. Pilgrim's getting his exercise, though. Time for the monastery, then. And what's inside? Wow. Another place that's just very ornate and very... Well, I don't know if you like chanting or not, but it's calming to me, anyways but also has a lot of weight to it again. The dangling cylindrical columns hanging from the ceiling are victory banners. They represent the victory of Buddhism over ignorance and death. That other banner represents the victory of the Boston Dob Dobs over the Nepal Red Yaks in the 44 series. Good. Also surrounding the monastery are a bunch of other pictures, like in the temple. Now, I'm not actually using the proper word for these, but these are actually known as thankas. They're really interesting pieces of art. Usually depicting some sort of importance to Buddhism, whether it's a deity or a scene. I tried looking up each of the individual ones, but I didn't really come out with very many results. Except for this guy. This guy's very obvious. This guy is, um, Mahakala, who is pretty much a kind of death deity. There's only one of him here, but he's surrounded by fire. He looks menacing enough. He's actually pointing downwards to a grate. Yeah, like in the garden, there are other grates around that enter into the, into the tunnels below. There's also a blue Buddha. Let's take a look. This one's even bigger than any other of the Buddhas that we've actually seen. And if you remember from when Shangri-La was destroyed, a day later, this is the Buddha that we actually climbed up on its head to get the time code that Agent 3 left. Looking all nice and good now, huh? What realm are you for, though? The shrine of the human realm, to humbly contain our pride. Hmm. Humble, pride. Humility. Alright then. Let's take a look at these other thinkers over here. Some of them are copied, but there are at least five or six of them that are actually individual. This one's another copy. 
Let's leave this little alcove over here. And this must be who we are searching for. I guess he's busy. I assume this place is a, sort of like a library. It's got a bunch of, well, books is the easiest and simplest term to describe what he is actually reading on here. Hello, I'm a new initiate. I made it here and I'm really, really tired. A new initiate. Welcome to Shangri-La. I am Lama Dalsdin Gyopa. I will be your teacher as you begin your path to Buddha. We lead simple lives dedicated to alleviating the suffering of the unenlightened. We constantly meditate to improve ourselves so that we may one day find Nirvana. It is a hard existence, but a good one. You undoubtedly have questions. Of course. And they're pretty much just kind of brought up by what you have just said. Now, you might notice that the Lama here blinks a lot. Even in this little image over here, he actually he actually has individual fl frames for blinking twice. It's right, right there. Boop, boop. There we go. But yes, the Unenlightened. We heard a little bit about the Unenlightened Realms from the Lama. Or not from the Lama, the Gardener, Emul. Your little buddy. Who are the Unenlightened? Those that are still trapped on the Wheel of Life. Those that die and do not reach Nirvana are sent to one of the realms of the wheel to be reborn. Hmm. The notion of reincarnation dominates the Buddhist religion. The image of the wheel of life is a symbolic one, going with the idea that life is a cyclical, circular process, constantly turning and returning. Let's learn more about this wheel of life. What is the wheel of life? When a person dies, karma forces the spirit to enter one of the six unenlightened realms. If the person led a life of vice, then he or she will go to a realm that embodies that vice. If the spirit does not achieve nirvana, then it is fated to wander, to be reborn again into another of the six realms. The wheel always turns. Only by learning the virtues that deliver us from the different realms can one escape and reach Nirvana. Well, that's certainly a nice, interesting piece about the Wheel of Life. And it's an interesting thing to look at, actually. Back at the temple, the thing that we actually looked at with the six segments is actually the Wheel of Life. And the six segments are for the six realms. But there's also a lot more to the Wheel of Life than just those six segments. Blinky. Alright, so... He did mention what he was talking about, that... an individual can achieve Nirvana. But what is it? What is Nirvana? Excellent question. Nirvana is a state of mind, a location, a being. It is reached when one has achieved the intellectual perfection of the Buddha. It takes enormous focus, but the reward is eternal peace. We strive every day for Nirvana. Continuing every day in order to relieve yourself of vices and closer to just Eternal happiness, I suppose. Mm. Well, that's all the questions, and that's all I need to know, so I can just work my way up the ranks and become a llama like you, if that's all the information I get from you. Goodbye. Now, Initiate, explore the monastery and pay respects to the shrines to begin your new trek for inner peace. Hello again, Initiate. How may I help you? Walk with peace, Initiate. 
Well, we have been already exploring the area, but there's still a bunch of other places that we need to explore still. So let's get on it. But, you know, there's some more information that we could get. I mean, and it's not going to be by exploring the monastery. Like, the information I kind of want to know right now is what's going on with the Dob Dob. If you remember, he has a black eye. How did he get the black eye? Hello, Tagpo. Could you come back after my meditations? Oh, and put some snow in your eye. It's starting to swell. Brother, I must humbly request solitude as it is my meditation time. Please visit me later. Well, you're certainly cheeky about the whole thing. But he definitely does know about the Dob Dob having a black eye, but I'm not going to get much information out of him about it. Well, let's report to him as the gardener, because, well, the garden isn't doing so well. The wishing tree is sick. I wonder how he can help with that situation, maybe. Ah, Himul, good. I wanted to speak to you about the garden. Himul. You don't look well. You have worked yourself too hard. Perhaps you should try more meditation to relieve your tension. It's not overwork. I just haven't been able to appease the Praetis and they've given me this cold because of bad karma. Right? What about the garden? I passed by the garden yesterday and noticed that the crops in the tree were doing poorly. How is the garden today? Kind of the same, I guess. I'm working on it right now. Excellent. I'm sure you will get to the root of the problem. Okay, where do puns fit in Buddhist doctrine? Seriously. Seriously. What is with you? But the garden isn't doing so well. Can you help with that? at all? The garden is not doing well. I feared as much. Losing the next crop could be disastrous. Check the roots of the wishing tree in the steam tunnels to see if they are healthy. Well, I know that they're not. Apparently it has to do something with the fluctuating temperatures in the steam tunnels. But you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? No. What sort of meditation? I would recommend that you vigorously increase your tantric meditations. It always seems to soothe me. I was going to mention tantric meditations at this point, but, well, I start little, started looking it up and went, you can look it up for yourself. There might be a reason why they actually please this guy here. Yeah. Goodbye. Walk with peace, brother. Hello again, brother. It is my meditation period. Could you visit me later? Alright then. Well, he's no help with the garden. No steam tunnels. How do you control the inner workings of the earth? The answer is not well. But I still am interested in what is going on with the Dob Dob. That's really where my mind is right now. We opened up to the light of the outside. There's only really one other person we could talk to in this entire place. And Yes, I'm actually being serious. There is only one other person in this place. And that is our Mongol friend over here. Now, 
Now, here's an interesting thing. Hmm. Arthur's comment bubble popped up here, but he doesn't say anything. I don't oh know what's going on here. It may me. be just an issue with me or with the game, but if there's actually a comment there, um, hmm. it just doesn't show up. So I don't know what Arthur's doing. Oh my. Alright, well, in order to talk to this guy, we have to take his disguise. He looks really important. Arthur mentioned that the Mongol hordes of Genghis Khan were coming th were around this area, and, well, the time is right. Oh. Hmm, let's check the guys before we actually start talking to this guy, because I want to know who it is. Yep, good old Genghis oh. Khan is here. Where are his Mongols? Um, apparently nowhere. Apparently he came on his own to this oh. place, which is... understandable. If he wants to actually pay respects to this place, but also, well... Oh, I can't say foolish. I always figured Khan to be taller, thicker, more barbaric. But this man Money seems to possess body. a dangerous animal cunning. The kind of cleverness to rip off your arms to crush oh. you in chess. Genghis Khan is no Attila the Hun. I will say that. Oh. Hi, uh, you must be Genghis Khan. I'm, I'm a big fan. I've got all your parchments. You're oh. so much more merciful in real life. Well, let's see how merciful he is when I'm just Money talking body. to him regularly. I did not summon you, monk. Go away. Well, you're a conversation starter. I will not waste any more time with you. Yeah, he's not good with small talk. Um, maybe it's because he's just talking to a gardener. We need someone more equal with him at this point. Um. Now, who do we have that might be equal to him? Well, he's here. He probably oh, is an initiate. Money. Going through the same things that we're probably going to be going oh, through. So that means the pilgrim should body. be a good idea to talk to him as. I mean, hi, I'm here. I am new to We Are New Buddies. What are you doing here, you audacious fool? Do you think you can just walk to the Great Khan and be granted an audience? Get out! Before I feed you to my horse. That's not very calm and collected of you. Oh Maybe I can teach you something about that. You mock my wish for solitude. You! A foolish worm defy Genghis Khan. Oh, Mani. Oh, Mani. Out to the cold hells with you. Come on, Rock. Watch his hook. Jab, jab. Don't just lie there like a bum. Oh. Damn. Okay. So we found, um, the most violent person in the game, oh which is understandably <laughs> Genghis Khan. Yeah, so, um, Pilgrim is not a good idea in order to oh. talk to him as. My first bit of advice for you is to hit the heavy bat. Then work on rolling with the punch, Mr. Glassjaw. Now, if you still want to talk with him, we're going to have to find someone he respects. Money or at body. least someone he won't beat to a pulp. Hmm. Now, who will we have in order to actually do that? Oh. Someone he respects. Well, he might respect the Dob Dob because if we remember what we learned about a Dob Dob, oh, it is actually a warrior monk. Oh. Dob Dobs are not to be feared. So there's kind of a power equal between Dob Dob and Genghis Khan here. Let's see what happens. I didn't think I'd see you again. Here to have your 
other eye decorated. Just leave now. If you break my concentration again, I'll break you. He smizes at you. That is... That is something. Wow. Okay. Oh. But... We know now how the top job got his oh black eye. My. It was because of this guy. And, well, I'm not happy about that. And probably the job job is not happy about that either. You task me. You task me again and I will not have it! Okay, yep, that's not gonna happen. I might as well have two black eyes right now. Oh boy, okay. Um... I think I've made him angry enough, Money so I'm not him. going to go and talk with him more. Might as well let him cool off. But, well, now we know that Genghis Khan gave the Dob Dob a black eye. I wonder how the Dob Dob feels about that, to be completely honest. So, let's use the advantage of the bell over here and go to the other side. Alright. Just has to hear that bell. I wonder if the bell was actually the thing that caused the avalanche. I, I, no, it wasn't. But you know, that would be just terrible if that ever happened, actually. Alright, Mr. Dub Dub, let's see. We have a bunch of other people to talk with you as, because I actually picked up the gardener, but didn't talk with the Dub Dub as the gardener, so let's start with that. Let's make our way through everything before getting to the heat of the matter with Genghis Khan, I suppose. Hello, Himo. Did you come to cross the bridge or to talk? Well, I do need to cross the bridge, so I might as well get that out of the way. Could you extend the bridge? Very well. Just walk down to the edge of the gatehouse and I will extend the bridge for you. And now that we're able to cross the bridge, we might as well talk. Can we talk? I'm glad you came to visit. I was worried that the guard might have been a little too hot this morning. Well, I guess we'll talk this way. But, yeah, he's mentioning the garden. When we were talking to Emul as the Dob Dob, he did mention that he might have been in the steam tunnels recently, and it turns out the Dob Dob El Dob Dob was. A little bit too hot, though. Why do you think the garden was too hot? I was working on a statue in the butter room late last night, but there was so much steam billowing from the vents that my butter statue almost melted. I had to divert heat away, so some extra heat may have gone to the greenhouse. So, you're saying that you changed the flow of the heat in the tunnels, and you might be the cause of why the garden is sick. Great job. How did you divert the heat? I sealed the tunnel doors leading to the butter room, which opened up paths from the steam vents to the greenhouse. You didn't think this through, did you? You probably could have figured out some way in order to divert the heat away from the barter room so that it didn't go to the garden? That would have been great. But let's learn more about the statue that apparently he's making underground. What kind of statue were you working on? Oh, it's a yak butter statue of the Bodhisattva. I'll show it to you when it's done. I'm sure it will turn out quite beautifully. I'm sure. So will our dwindling food supply. So thanks, buddy. Goodbye. Goodbye, brother. Well, what does the llama have to say to the Dob Dob? 
Sounds like a joke. What did the llama say to the dub dub? Nothing. Llama Dulston, do you need to cross the bridge? Or speak with me? Could you extend the bridge? Very well. Just walk downstairs to the edge of the gatehouse, and I will extend it for you. It's certainly interesting how many lines the Dab Dab recorded in order to just say that this individual person can cross the bridge. There's a lot of detail that went into that, too. Can we talk? Lava, I was hoping to have a word with you about our new initiate, Genghis Khan. Oh, really? Well, the llama didn't seem very interested when I came as the Dob Dob to him. But, let's see what he has to say about Genghis Khan, huh? Surely, brother, what about him? Khan. When I told him I did not have the answers to his questions, he started mumbling. Then he turned away as if to leave, but instead he swung his fist and struck me. It took all my restraint and training not to bludgeon him really angry about this, but he came to him for questions. What questions was he asking you? He was searching for the Cedar's secrets. I know nothing of it. I told him to see you to learn more, but he demanded answers. It'll get him from the closest person that is there. That's, that's what happens. The seed is secrets, though. That's something to keep in mind, but, well, let's... He was also starting to mumble, as well, when he wasn't able to get the answers that he was looking for. What was he mumbling? I think he was trying to recite the holy mantra to calm himself, but he failed. You still need to put some snow on it, though. Come on, we're surrounded by mountains. It's nice and cool and brisk and... yeah. But yeah, now we know the story of how the Dob Dob got his black eye, so I think we're good. Goodbye. Goodbye, Llama. But it's really not a good story unless there's some drama. Ha! <laughs> Con! Have you come seeking answers with your fist again? Well, come now, warrior! You won't surprise me again. Acting threatening. <laughs> nice shiner. Who gave that to you? Just go away. Mm, no, I still have some more things to tell you. And ask you. And maybe you'll provoke me more. You will get no answers from me, Khan. Go! Yeah, <laughs> power, power. How dare you threaten the great Genghis Khan! Unlike my brothers, I won't shrink away from combat. Now, go away! Or I'll show you how dangerous a Dob Dob can be. Never learned how powerful a Dob Dob can be, but with a warrior monk who is trained mentally and to an incredible amount, well, I would, I would expect that you would have a bunch of skills. I still have the questions. I don't want to fight you. I seek answers. I already told you I can't help. I don't have the answers of the Sita. You are being tested by the Lama. Go speak with him. I guess we should, but I don't know. In the back of my head, why would you name a warrior monk who is apparently very threatening, very disciplined, why would you name it Dob Dob? <laughs> Dob Dob? What kind of name is that for a warrior? That sounds like a bird call. You insult me again. Well, okay. Thank you, sir. May I have another? I really just want to leave this on good terms, though. You may have punched me, but I at least want to say goodbye to you. Goodbye. Hmm. 
There we go. Leaving on good terms. I think that is a good day of socializing in Genghis Khan's shoes. Alright then. Well, that's a good start to what we have going on in Shangri-La, but there is one final place that we might as well briefly head into. Because we've been hearing about it in a bunch of places, first from the gardener, then the llama, now the dob dob. More specifically, because he spoke of a butter room within the steam tunnels, and I would like to take a look at that. But that means going in properly into the steam tunnels. Now I would be going down this grate, but I prefer to go back to this area that we visited earlier. Arthur mentioned that we needed something long and hooked in order to pull the lever within the grate. And we need to have exactly that with the gaff. The monastery is closest, but in terms of just going through all of the grates, there's not much of a reason to actually go through this grate, so we might as well just show it off while it's here. Everything is also not outside friendly in here. So let's see where this goes. Alright, well, we're back here. This kind of looks familiar. This steam vent area must correspond to the image of fire indicated on the tunnel map. Right, the tunnel map. This is something that is very, very handy when we're going down here. Remember, we have the greenhouse over there, we have, and we have the two temples. The monastery, and also where the white Buddha is with the loot. Good signifier. But we also have this area all the way down here. This is actually the grate that we just came through, which means that we came up this part of the tunnel to the exact same steam room that the greenhouse has. So that leaves one last route that we get to explore, which will lead us into the large amount of tunnels going around underneath Shangri-La. And that's this way. I don't know how much you are up for spelunking, but, well, this area, the closest you're going to get for getting underground. You can thank Phosphorescent Yellow Lichen for the romantic mood lighting in these tunnels. But from what I hear, all the fun's definitely in the Red Lichen District. Yeah, you call it romantic, I call it a bit daunting. The steam tunnels of the, this game I is a bit of a hit and miss for me. The lever probably rolls the stone wheel over the adjacent passageway. Alright, now be careful, because pulling the lever will open a way for you, but block the other passage. And this is one of the reasons. We're not going to be necessarily doing this right now, but I might as well. And... This is how the Dob Dob diverted the heat inside of the tunnels, by changing where the wheels are blocking. Which means that there are different routes that you're able to go. This place is a hit and miss for me, simply because, well, it's large, but in terms of all of the other areas, it's rather featureless. And also this happens. When we're going to get into the meat of the tunnels, um, this is something that can actually happen a bunch of times. Where you're going to block yourself in, and then you have to do a bunch of running around and running in circles which is not really that exciting. The atmosphere, of course, is great. But 
well, I just wish it had a little bit more than that. So let's push this wheel back to where it's supposed to be. And then continue down this tunnel. Also, it takes a long time to just walk everywhere because the animations are long and thorough. And while I appreciate thorough, I also appreciate speedy in terms of, well, this place because it makes it seem a lot larger than it actually is. Gage, look up. There's a symbol on the ceiling. Oh? This tunnel map is helpful, but I think it can add something that would make it even more useful. I'll start updating the positions of the doors onto the map after we've been to a location. I'll also mark our current position on the map. Now that I've done that, can we maybe talk about giving me a raise, a kind word, overtime pay, sick leave? I'll write your reference letter. I just need to know what you want on it. But yeah, so there is a symbol on here. This symbol corresponds with one of the symbols on the map you found in the greenhouse. These symbols should help us match our position in the tunnels to the map. And they do, including Arthur's little helpful hints here. So you can see that we're in the intersecting circle rings room over there, based on the arrow. But he's also signified where the uh, stone wheels are and what passages they are blocking. Now, all of these areas also have their specific stone wheels. So what I'm going to do before we continue onwards into this place is actually fill out the map. So I'll see you in a moment once we see where all the tunnels are. Alright, and here we are with all of the wheels properly shown on the map. As you can see, we actually have a rather direct route to another one of the entrances, but our destination for now is actually the Butter Room. Now it's actually signified by this scary looking symbol over here. So we're going to head our way over there. For the purposes of going through these steam tunnels now, I'm going to be always turboing through them. Well, let's take a look at the other steam rooms over here, because there, in addition to the greenhouse steam room, there are two others. This what makes the additional heat. But because of the amount of thorough walking that is made for this area, well, speeding through it is definitely going to make it a lot easier. And of course, with each of the specific rooms, there are different symbols. There's another symbol. Looks like they were placed on the walls to mark positions to help people find their way. Exactly. See, each of the rooms, the total of eight of them, minus the steam rooms, have their own specific markings to show where they are. So if you're not actually using Arthur to the maximum like I am, you at least have an idea of where you are based on looking up at what symbol is up on the ceiling. Now, the room that we are looking for has this symbol on top of it. Correct. All right. Now, it's not a one straight shot in order to get to the butter room. It actually takes at least one press of the lever over here to spin and move the wheel. And now we can head on to the butter room. You definitely know you're at the butter room when you have three nuts on the ceilings. Hmm. They're also shiny and glowy. They're holy... Holy nuts! But with that small change, we make our way into the butter room. Apparently where the Dob Dob spends his time when he's not on guard. With this little friend over here. Hello, friend. Let's see what this sim 
This inscription says, The writing on the wall loosely translates to Channel your energy to obtain the enlightenment you seek. Channel energy. Alright. So it's got a lot to say about this. It's good, yeah, but I prefer something more along the lines of a bull leaping Buddha on black velvet. And you're not going to get it in this time period. You're not going to get that mix of culture. This mural is a representation of the Buddha, much like the black statue in this room, but it appears that this depiction emphasizes the inside of the Buddha's body. And over here is the x-ray of a smoking Buddha. Really? Well, there's a Buddha over there. From the tools and instruments, I'd say someone is using this room to create yak butter sculptures. Or the monks have started a lucrative leg waxing business. I guess you could also do that. It's nice and humid down here, I assume. But yeah, there's a lot of butter stuff down here. For the dub dub to use. Welcome to the Wax Museum. Along the north wall, you will see a marvelous replica of Boris Karloff as the Black Buddha. Let's get a closer look at this Black Buddha. So far we have seen five Buddhas. White, blue, green, yellow, and red. So this is the sixth Buddha, the Black Buddha. Now we've recently seen the Lama and... and we know that there are six realms, so that must mean that there are six Buddhas, and this is the last one. The Lama told you to pay respects to the shrines. I assume the colored statues around the monastery are the shrines he was speaking of. The inscriptions on the statues said that they were shrines of certain realms. From what the Lama told us about the Wheel of Life, it sounds like these statues each represent one of the six realms of unenlightenment. The gardener said that he gives offerings to the shrine to alleviate the suffering of those trapped in the Praetis realm. We know that there is a colored shrine for each of the six realms. I have a feeling that the yellow Buddha is not the only statue that takes offerings. Probably true. Now, apparently, this statue, according to the Dob Dob, is made of butter. It looks fantastic in terms of the intricacies of butter sculpting. I don't know much about butter, butter sculpting, but, well, again, it has the weird toes. The Shrine of the Hell's Realm, to burn away their sins. Alright, so we got the Hell's Realm. Very fitting for being underground. Let's go talk to Lama Blinky about this. See, it's not just me who thinks he's blinking too much. But yes, we have to go and speak to the Lama about this. Now that we've seen all six of them, but first we better do something more about this, like churning butter! Oh, I love churning butter, it's so good. Yeah! It's doing so much work! Okay, I'm good there. Look at, let's look at these schematics here. That sketch shows detailed plans to build a Buddha statue. From all the butter churning equipment, I'd say it's a schematic to build a better butter Buddha. Okay. Good. That better be trademarked. Nobody wants to steal the better butter Buddha idea from the Dob Dob. That works way too well, I, I gotta say. But that looks like that would be all. In terms of what Arthur said, the next good direction is to actually return to the monastery. And speak to him about each of the realms that we have now seen. The Praetis, Animal, Human, God, Ashura, and Hell's Realm. In fact, it's easy to actually get back to the monastery because there's actually an entrance from the grate that we saw. Right next to Mahakala. So, I will see you next time everyone as we escape from these tunnels and head back up to the monastery to speak to our nice last two people that we haven't spoken to yet. The Lama and Genghis Khan. He's probably cooled down by now, so we might as well take the chance. See you next time, everyone!